So, quick, immediate follow-up questions. Question. Sorry, I didn't want to make one, but I had one in mind. Um, regarding this last speech, uh, I should have said that I'm a working student, so studying is my hobby. And I'm studying Swedish at Milan State University. I'm Italian. When you are saying that Nordic countries' languages are spoken by a very small portion of people, uh, are you taking into consideration students, worldwide students? Last night I heard on the BBC that the, the British are thinking of um, um, not counting foreign students going to study to uh, the UK in order to decrease the number of uh, immigrants to uh, the UK. But I would rather say that in order to increase the number of uh, speakers of the Nordic lang countries' languages, you should be adding the number of the students of foreign, uh, foreign um, Nordic countries' languages. And how can they help you increase the, your goals? Yeah, you're right. When we're talking about number of speakers, we usually reference uh, native speakers uh, because it's quite hard to count uh, all the speakers who, who, who speak in this language. And so this total number of speakers, of course, is getting bigger. But you raise a very good point that uh, in, uh, it's important to involve uh, students and people who, who use uh, language resources in, in producing, elaborating them, cleaning them in a, a crowdsourcing manner. And this is an ongoing trend. It's uh, maybe beyond the scope of uh, our projects, but this is a line for a uh, number of Language resource centers are, are looking on and but you call it and maybe we'll elaborate. MetaShare is also, uh, uh, LRAD is also uh, working on a model to help involve uh, uh, people in outsourcing effort of, of developing language resources. Yes, because one of the things that I would like to do as a student is to be able to build my own corpus of Swedish um, and also uh, try and exploit technology to learn uh, Swedish more. Uh, probably also by using uh, video games. I'm not a video game player, but why not? And if you think about it, the uh, aging population will probably need this as a form of education and also as a companion. So well, maybe, maybe at the end of the session we can give you a few names of our Swedish technology partners who can really be of some, some help. I was going to suggest we maybe register this as a user requirement. Any other immediate follow-up questions, clarification questions on the presentations? Then let's maybe see whether our additional panel members, Valid Hans, you like to take the opportunity at this point? Yeah, let, let me just uh, maybe spark off a discussion or see. Maybe there is no discussion, maybe everything is discussed, but until very recently uh, we heard quite a number of concerns about the future of the structure. Yeah? The structure is now forming, people are uh, seeing it, yeah? for a while it was just talk and PowerPoint slides, now they see it, yeah? they can put things there, there are notes, there are uh, resources and the four digit figures and so on. And, 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 and now new projects are planning already to make uh, the outcome of their project, their tools, their resources, their data available via this platform. And now people were worrying what happens if um, a project uh, that finances right now this or the four projects that finance it come to an end and um, uh, now we have to disclose this uh, secret, we try to keep it secret, yeah, but these four projects, they will come to an end, yeah, so, and uh, even if you thought they would go on forever. So, uh, and, and we were asked a little bit and people were worried and, and we took this very seriously and uh, we got also pressure a little bit from the, uh, from the, side, from the side of the funders who also don't want to see things disappear. Yeah, so they said, is there a sustainability model? Are you at a point where the community can carry this on? 
is there at least a consortium of, uh, of uh, partners that is strong enough to carry on even if there's a funding gap or even if there's no funding for that type. Yeah, we, 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 we listen today to many of the things, nothing is to be taken for granted, yeah, so no predictions on, on, on funding. Will this work on, uh, will this work? Because that may influence the decision of other uh, projects, uh, resource producers, resource uh, creating initiatives, uh, what to do with their resources, and what channels to use for making them available. And so there has been now, um, under, um, under a nice time pressure, the time pressure was the metaphorum here, yeah, so there was a group of, of, uh, of, 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 of people, basically there, most of them are sitting here, but there are others out uh, who also already committed, yeah, committed uh, uh, resources, was a group forming, uh, getting together and saying, do, can, can we do that? And it turns out we are now convinced after a few meetings that we can, so that we got enough, we got uh, a very nice offer by Elra that was also already disclosed at Elric. Uh, many of you were there and, and listened to it. And now there are other commitments by, by other partners. And if we take this all together and we make a plan, then we could guarantee for, I don't know, not, not maybe for, for, for tens of uh, ten, 10 years or so, but let's say for two years comfortably and probably for longer, we could uh, guarantee that the uh, that MetaShare would continue yeah, at, at the base level, maybe not uh, be, being uh, able to, to come up with uh, very exciting new features yeah, and things that the community demands without additional funding, but nevertheless it will be, uh, it's in, in, a, in its form that it will be in by the fall now, by the end of this year, it's sustainable. So now, um, I think if you all say thank you that we agree to that and, and we all believe it and we have no further questions, then actually we can close this earlier, but it would be a shame now all these people are sitting here and being prepared to uh, <laughs> see whether you are, have any doubts, yeah, any remaining doubts and they are prepared to answer them. Yeah. Well, I, I guess uh, both Stelius and Hans anticipated on a large number of uh, issues, I have to say. so. I'll make my uh, comment briefer. Um, we have been uh, serving the community for the last 15, 17 years uh, through a very centralized basic distribution instrument and we uh, took part to MetaShare with the uh, aim and the hope that it will be the next generation in uh, sharing and resources within the research community in an easy way, more friendly way and very likely in, in a more uh, useful way. Uh, what we have been working on uh, in, in MetaShare uh, was always done in a framework that would allow us to move to a, a more networked instrument and platform. This is the, uh, the MetaShare, in which we will bring our resources and the resources of our partners and <coughs> providers. We will try to use that in a way that makes things simple. The first thing that we worked on was to bring all our uh, licensing schemas into this MetaShare to make sure that at some stage we get something that is almost standardized and people think of it as the MetaShare licensing package. We would like to make all the um, user management, the user uh, fa uh, functions in, in the MetaShare more easy to use and bring some of the plans we had in our, cata in our plans into that framework. We also expect this MetaShare to go beyond the simple sharing of language resources. We will be bringing in information about existing resources. Some of you may have heard about the, what we call the Universal Catalog, about the LRE map that is a kind of uh, uh, catalog of resources described by the community members. These will be injected at some stage in the uh, MetaShare repository uh, of resources and other initiatives that we have been working on. So I think ERA has a very strong commitment both to use MetaShare as its uh, daily operation instrument and also make sure that this spirit and trend of networking and, and uh, distributed uh, operations is really uh, coming in reality. Thank you. Well, thank you.
thanks to Hans and Khalid, I saw a few hands, but I felt like saying, I'm not a member of MetaShare, but I very much like what I see and feel it. There's the potential here to address some needs that I also heard raised yesterday that I have experienced myself. So I was wondering whether one could extend the question in a sense that, that Hans raised. Um, trust us. We have set this up in a, in a manner that is sustainable. It will, be, it will continue to be there. Could we extend that into the question, well, is it ready for uh, the community to start um, contributing um, beyond the meta family to um, the, the continued growth and acceptance? So, for example, I'm, 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 I've been involved in a decades almost, in a large open source development effort. Um, I was sitting here and, and many of the questions you raise, licensing, um, how to um, convey the spirit of, of sharing, and how to do that in a, in, a, in a manner that is comfortable to everyone involved. Um, so I've been asking myself, should we go through our open source licenses and see whether the time is ripe for us to, to look at inserting the technology we have built um, as a contribution, as a donation to, to MetaShare, and I'm sure there, there are others who may be in, in similar situations. And so, maybe very briefly, um, it was almost a rhetorical question Is MetaShare ready to invite the community for this kind of? Well, I, I, uh, I think we, we do have a very stable versions of this repository management, and the idea is either to offer a large number of repositories where individuals and researchers can uh, donate their own resources or those who have a large number of resources can be helped to set up their own repository or they can, they can uh, donate it to different places. At the end of the day, what is really important is to make their resources available and visible. And this is what Mita shared as well. And uh, today we are ready to take care of that. Let's open the floor. Okay, guys. Now, first of all, quantity is good. And it's all right to mention numbers and talk about it in our uh, floor here. But uh, Andres, Andres mentioned that this was there to serve the needs of the industry. And actually, I don't see it. From the industrial perspective, we need certain components to be in place. I am sure that they are going to be marked with non-sharing scenarios. Could you, any one of you, take you, me through the data repository and say that I, on the basis of the fact that a language technology company wants to expand its search engine service to a new language in Europe, can they get the language requirements that they need, which is morphology, possibly compounder, something else, with a license that they can use and go forward with in a good way from the MetaShare community. Uh, the, the, the answer is a very clear no. Uh, and this is not the task. The task of MetaShare is a platform. Yeah? It is a platform, it is a structure, it is an infrastructure in which now, uh, depending on funding, on interest, not just on, on available funding for research production, but mainly on the pull also, on the pull and on the interests and other communities <coughs> getting together, uh, a more or less comprehensive or more or less usable offer of resources will be provided. Yeah? So the, all we could see now, and I think we can agree on that, the demand for this platform is there, because it's already there, people are already putting in their stuff, they are already uh, searching, they are, they are waiting for that, they are looking for, for, for things, so, uh, because we are running it in a, in a test now, in a test version. So the, the demand is clearly there, it has been uttered a couple of, many, many, many times. That the real demand for, for resources is much bigger cannot be uh, attributed. It's like uh, having a newspaper that you print, but uh, maybe you don't read everything in there yet, yeah, and you want uh, other things to be in there and other contents and so. And in the end, if the, if the contents are not sufficient, and there's another newspaper that would be better, people buy the other newspaper. 
right now our worry is of course uh, like everybody else's uh, whether now all the uh, how how small and medium enterprises could get all the uh, resources they really need in the competition with others that already have them but we should separate this from the case of the platform it's a very important question and it should be solved also but um, the sustainability of metashare is a separate thing uh, but uh if I may respond, uh, if the question is, uh, is there something that you can immediately take and use? And I think there, is, uh, there are many useful resources already available. For example, terminology. It's so needed for translation and localization companies and not only for them. And there are more than 2 million terminology entries in 29 languages already available. Wordnets, they are so useful for different kinds of applications in here. Uh, uh, information extraction and uh, question answering systems. Uh, corpora, uh, parallel corpora, monolingual corpora, it's so needed for machine translation development. So there are resources that industry can take now and use, and there will be many more. I, I guess Gudrun is asking the usual question. Industry is expecting to get very high quality resources very high coverage resources and very low pricing and of course the resources are either there or not MetaShare will be just giving an instrument to share them but the way we see MetaShare is a way to share your cost so if we have to do some Slovenian, uh, Estonian uh, parallel corpus for one customer, for one user the cost would be very high to, uh, to afford it but if you Try to use this meta share to cut costs because you are going to be using this through four or five partners. We do hope that this will be a very helpful uh, hint through through meta share. But meta share will never never substitute what the community is developing in terms of resources and particularly high quality resources. I see no one. Fighting for the microphone. Um, something you reported, Stelios, um, concerned me. You said the most frequently used type of license currently is the no redistribution one. And for academic use, um, I think that, that concerns me. Um, it's often that we want to enhance a resource, annotate a corpus, um, maybe just correct it. And then certainly I want to be able to share that with my collaborators. So, um, I was wondering, what can we do to... So I, I read the manifesto, the MetaShare, and it, it, I, I see a very strong vision of... I, I, I see the open source idea in there, correct me if I misread. Um, thinking back to what uh, Kimo told us this morning, so if we allowed ourselves to be optimistic about language technologies in the Connecting Europe facility, there was a core of entirely taxpayer-financed um, services and, and resources. So those should be free, accessible to everyone, under the least restrictive licenses. So what can we do? What can MetaShare do? What can we as the community do? Assuming that at least some of you um, share my point of view and, and the desire for redistribution and least restrictive licensing where possible. What can we do to, to enhance, to strengthen that spirit? Yeah, I think it is, it is clear and uh, it hasn't said very, very beginning, there is a very clear drive of MetaShare towards openness. There are various qualifications on around openness. Hmm? And these qualifications are the dimensions along which the different licensing models that I also briefly presented uh, can be structured. So you can open, you can share, and then you can start if you want elaborating on the types of restrictions that, uh, that, that you want to use. Now there are two levels, this is a level of creativity. Now, there are two levels uh, of, of problems that are involved in uh, sharing and opening. And the first has to do with the primary content. Very, very usually, the primary content comes with restrictions that do not allow the researcher to redistribute the whole thing, but only distribute his annotations. This is the very known uh, 
problem. Uh, it was also touched upon by uh, Thanos, I think. They have a huge problem in uh, uh, clearing up substantial parts of uh, the Hungarian National Corpus. Uh, so this is one problem, which is the, 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 the copyright, the legal copyright problem. The second problem is a social one. The fact that although you may have the right to free to, to make a resource or a tool freely available, you may want to add restrictions to this. Then this is a problem of our community. It is not a legal problem itself. It is a social and economic problem. If you want, it 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 reveals somehow the social and financial projections of this community. Now, what we can do for the second thing that for our community, we can preach, we can prove, we need cases, and there are already cases, look at what has happened in the machine translation community, how it has boomed in the last years after making available substantial quantities of uh, data uh, under very permissive licenses, but also important software components okay, uh, uh, under very permissive uh, open source licenses as well. So this is what we can do, I believe, for the second. For the first, we have to fight, and this is what I, I, I believe most of us will do, even this afternoon or tomorrow at the Digital Agenda Assembly. Uh, what, we, what we want to fight for is the recognition that such restrictions, in the EU at least, okay, copyright restrictions, when the use is for research purposes at least, should be retracted. So we have to fight for copyright exceptions for research. And in, in, in this fight, I expect critical mass will be an important element. Absolutely. So the pulling together, I think, is, is, is an important step. Too. In this spirit, let me maybe throw out a thought that popped into my head to the commission services. Um, many of these resources are the results of taxpayer-financed research projects. Um, Typically, we say explicitly which deliverables will be public, but after the completion of a project, the website goes down and they don't necessarily remain accessible. So I'm wondering whether, in collaboration with the Commission, MetaShare might serve as a well, long-term archive repository for um, um, the, the, the results, where there are language resources of um, Commission Finance Research. Our time's out. I, I feel some of the speakers have to run off. So let's thank the entire panel one more time.